Perfect. All right. So, Eola na oivi. Eola means life. Yeah, to light, to live. Eola na oivi. Oivi are the people of this land. Evi, we should recognize the word, right? Everybody recognizes Evi? I, we know that one already. My kai. Okay. So that, that is the focus for this week. Um, so before we begin, we're going to watch a video. Uh, the purpose of this video is to share with you the importance and the relationship of language and culture. Oh, yeah, this is the one I have to, sorry. There's a real movement occurring. It's helping kids. It's growing culture in communities. This is a tremendously important trend of young people learning their languages, learning their past, and then doing better in school. You would be shocked at how many kids you're hearing run around speaking the native language. You do not know how much I am proud to be Ojibwe. It's amazing and awesome. This works, and we understand at the legislative level in the federal government that this works, and we have a good bipartisan group of trying to make sure that we replicate this across the country because this is a model that supports children and supports communities. There is a sense of pride, a sense of shared culture, a sense of respect. It has empowered me, really, to remember that the significance of language, one's native language, is something that needs to be promoted. We want our kids to learn their language we want those traditions, and they'll be healthier human beings by knowing their culture and language. It's true to say that it's a success in Hawaii culturally, but it's also a success academically. I think maybe 10 years ago, the thinking used to be that in an academic setting, you sort of had to make a binary choice between teaching a native language and performance, metrics, testing well, and all the rest of it. And what we have found out over a period of time is that kids in immersion actually do better. So you don't have to make this false choice between teaching kids in their own culture and language and having them be high achievers. It turns out that's the best strategy to have kids succeed in the modern world. There is a theory, which I think makes a lot of sense, that when you learn two languages and you have to use two languages, you have to exercise a lot of cognitive control in order to manage those two languages. That kind of cognitive control spreads into other areas of cognitive functioning so that they're often better at academic tasks because they have more cognitive control. What we've learned is that you really have to provide support for the minority language. So even though your goal in the long run is a balanced bilingualism, the way that you achieve that is by giving as much and even more support for the less widely supported language as you can so that you build up competence in that language to prevent English from swamping it. I don't think that being bilingual is an excuse to not excel in education. 
the one of the top students in my class. And I've learned that being bilingual takes more knowledge than to speak one language. Ray looks back on his years at Ayapurun with gratitude for his solid foundation of fluency and academic preparation for his future aspirations as an engineer. It was inspiring for us from Hawaii to see these native youth excelling in all areas of life. What has happened across the country with Native American tribes and with Alaska Native communities is that they've started to understand how much of an example Hawaii is for the rest of the world. We see the Punanaleo and their success saying, this is what's possible. This is what you're investing in. These are the results that happen. You can kind of see that. That's a sense of pride for our people. This model, it is bringing educated people back to impoverished rural areas. People are going to college to become teachers. They have degrees, they're professional, they have children who are in Anishinaabe. They're bringing earning capacity as well, so economically this is beneficial for an area that's really high poverty otherwise. We all believe the language has its own power. It has the power to bring the people here who are going to take care of it and will help it to continue. Who else is going to speak our languages or protect our languages if we don't? The language is a natural resource, just like our water, our trees, our land. And we are obligated to protect it. Most everybody up here believes in federal funding for things like the national park system, for things like historic sites and historic preservation. We know there's a history and a heritage to the country that needs to be preserved and passed on. And we need to look at native languages exactly the same way. They ought to have a future, not just a past. Okay, so I hope that gave you guys kind of an idea of what we're going to be talking about and what we're going to be diving into this week as far as language and how important language and culture go together, language and the history of our language and all of that. But before we move on, last week we did introductions and this week we have some new people with us. Um, I can't, okay. So this week we have some new people with us. So I'd like to do introductions again, if that's okay, before we continue so that we all know, look like everybody who never brushed their hair today, they're all fixing their hair. We already see you guys, so don't worry. Okay, so we're gonna do introductions today again. And Auntie, I think I gave you guys um, the introduction today. Oh, I guess I could just share this with you guys. Look at us talking about using Zoom and Auntie Zavir here skipping through things. Now it's not the Zoom, it's my computer. Your introduction for today, your name, your age, and your school district. And then the icebreaker today is gonna to be, if you could learn any language in the world, what language would it be and why? So that's what you're going to share today. I want you to introduce yourself and then choose a language. If there's any language you could learn, what, would, why, what language would it be and why would you wanna learn that language? So because we have our raise hand feature, who would like to go first? Okay, perfect. I think she's going to go in the circle that's on my screen. And the first people up is the Kimsu House. So you folks can go ahead and introduce yourself. 
your age, what school you go to, and if there's a language that you'd want to learn, what is it and why? So we say our name and stuff? Mm hmm Yeah, because there's some people on here who's new and they don't know everybody's name. My name is Cordelia. And if I had to, like, pick a language to learn, it would probably be German or Chinese because those are some of the other ethnicities that I am. I don't know what to say. Awesome. Okay. When you guys speak, speak closer oh. to your um oh. speak, speak closer uh, to your from uh, Battleground School District. Uh, I'm Augie. Okay, you guys are freezing a little bit, so maybe Auntie will come back to you guys, okay? Hi, I'm Augie. Oh, there you go. Uh, if I had to learn one language or one that I want to learn, it would also be probably Chinese or German because, well, the same thing. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Augie and Cordelia. We didn't really, we, we didn't hear you guys too good, but it's okay. I think you said German and Chinese, right? Perfect. All right. All right. Next up is Mema. Aloha. My name is Mema. I'm 14 years old. I'm in the Beaverton School District. And if I had one language to learn would either be Irish or Greek because my dad's side of the family, their ado his adoptive parents are part of those ethnicities and um, they've been very supportive with my family. And so I feel like it'll be like kind of a thank you to them. So, yeah. And I, and I go to the Beaverton High School. Next up is Liam. Hello. Uh, I am Liam and I'm 14 years old. I am from the Hillsboro School District going into Glencoe High, Sc High School. And if I could learn any language, it'd probably be either Japanese or Hawaiian because that's the two sides that my family are from. And it'd be nice because my mom was learning Japanese. And it'd be nice if I could like learn some with her. Yeah. My uh the next one is Haley. Uh, hi, my name is Haley. I am 15 years old and I am in the Beaverton School District. Uh, of course, I want to learn Hawaiian and Japanese. Uh, Korean also sounds cool to me, but a language I really want to learn is Arabic because it just looks so beautiful. <laughs> wow, mahalo, Haley. Mikai. All right, next person in line is Keizo. Okay, my name is Keizo.
Sorry, we're, we're changing computers over here in our house. Sorry. Michael, your turn, Michael. All right, so my name is Micah. I go to Brookwood, or I used to go to Brookwood Elementary, but now I'm going to South Meadows. And a language that I would like to learn is how to speak Filipino so I could talk to my grandma easier. Okay, you make a, all right, Chloe, your turn. I'm Chloe, I'm 14 and I'm in the Beaverton School District. And uh, like Korean and French are really pretty languages, I think, but I would like to learn Hawaiian because I dance hula and like all the, everything we dance to is in Hawaiian. Angelina, your turn. Um, hi, I'm Angelina. I'm 11 years old and I'm in the Beaverton School District. Um, a language I would choose to learn would be maybe Tagalog because um, before my grandma died um, in Hawaii, she used to um, talk to us in Tagalog and I never used to really understand that much. Um, so I kind of want to learn more so I could kind of understand what she used to say before. All right, now your turn. Hi, I'm Naomi Halanihi. I'm with the Evergreen School District and I go to Ilihi Elementary. I'm nine years old and I would choose to speak Japanese because my bajan, she can speak a little bit of English, but I would try to speak to her in Japanese. Mikai, mahalo. All right, Nicholas, your turn. Hi, I'm Nicholas, and I'm in the Beaverton School District going in Cedar Park at Cedar Park Middle School, and I'm 14. Um, if I could pick a, like a language or a few languages I'd pick, I want to speak Thai, Japanese, and Spanish. Oh, no, not Spanish, Korean. I just thought they were interesting languages. Very nice. All right, Sophia, your turn. Hi, I'm Sophia. Um, I go to the Beaverton School District at Conestoga Middle School, and I'm 12 years old. And um, if I could learn any language, I'd probably want to learn um, Ilocano, um, just because my grandma, um, that's what she speaks. And she wasn't, my grandpa didn't really allow her to teach any of her children or anything like that, um, unless it was um, Tagalog. So um, I really think it'd be really, she'd be really happy if I learned it so that we can communicate um, even though she does speak English. Um, um, I think she'd just be happy that, you know, we can learn it. Nicholas, you have a question? My, oh no, I have a statement, or not a statement, but anyway, my dad, my dad and grandma speak um, Ilocano, so that's an interesting thing. Nice. I want to learn too. Mahalo. All right, now we're down to Kamalani and Kahoku. Kahoku, you're first. Um, if I were to choose a language to learn or like will learn, um, I would definitely want to learn the Hawaiian language, like Olo Hawaii, and then Spanish. Because when I'm Hawaiian and two, because I'm gonna be, I feel like I'm gonna be using Spanish a lot in the career I want to do, and then um, Japanese and Korean. Okay. Come on, in your turn. Um. Okay. Um, well, that's, okay. Um. Hello, my name is Kamalani, and I'm. And I'm 10, and I go to the Beaverton School District, and I go to Mountain View Middle School. 
and if I could speak any language, it would be Ukrainian, because one of my friends can only speak Ukrainian, so it'd be nice to um speak with him. Oh, Russian. Yeah. Awesome, mahalo. All right, Kina, your turn. Hi, my name is Kina. I go to Patterson in the Hillsborough School District, and I'm 10 years old. The language that I'd really like to learn is Tagalog because a lot of my family speaks that back in the Philippines. And sometimes when I talk in English too fast, they can't understand me. So it would be a little easier to just talk fast and Mahalo, Mikai. I would love to learn sign language too, wherever Sophia. Yeah. Should it, Chloe, did I call you yet? No, yeah. Oh, I did call. Oh man, your face and move. Okay. Everybody's face and move. True me off. Is there anybody I never call yet? I went to everybody, right? Okay, sorry. Okay, perfect. Because it moved. What? Just one second. Kamalani, just leave it in one space. It's not about making. Oh, sorry. Look, I still get my. Oh, uh, I can go first, and then Antila can go. Um, okay, sorry. I, I'm learning Hawaiian. Uh, well, I learned Hawaiian in high school, and then I'm I'm working on it still, working to be fluent. Um, and I'm learning Spanish right now because, as a teacher, a lot of my students speak Spanish. Uh, so I'm trying to connect with them that way. Um, I also had a student this year who spoke Japanese, so I'm trying to retap into that a little bit. That was a little rough. But those are kind of the main three at the moment. Mainly the two, but I do try to, whatever I can remember from Japanese. My one semester of Japanese in college, I try to work through it. What about you, Antile? Me, um, I would like to, if, uh, well, the language I wanted to learn was Hawaiian. Um, so I'm uh, fluent in Hawaiian. But if I could learn another language and I want to learn is Japanese. Um, because I would like to one day teach hula in Japan. So that would be the language. Oh, I should learn Filipino too, because one day I'd like to teach hula in, in the Philippines. Yeah, I just want to teach hula everywhere. Just kidding. <laughs> so, but yes. Awesome. Mahalo. Yeah. All right. So we're moving on. I remember all you guys' languages now. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry. <sighs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Come on, he's having some issues over here. Make sure the camera's facing him. <sighs> Shining star over here. All right, call me. And moving on. Hello, my Kako. I'm Kaipo Ikealing. I'm here to explain why there is a large language difference between our Kupunas and our Mo'opunas. Uh, historically, after the illegal overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom in 1893, a law was en enacted in 1898 that banned a Hawaiian language as a language of medium education in the public school system. And so after that ban was put into effect, um, our elders who spoke Hawaiian in school were either humiliated, beaten, or often their teachers would go to their homes and their parents were told 
uh, not to speak Hawaiian to their children in order for them to succeed in, in the new world and in the new ways, uh, Hawaiian language should be diminished as English should increase. So in lots of families, stories I hear that only the kupunas would then talk to each other in Hawaiian. And, the, and their children, the makua, who will become later, were often left out in that, in that dialogue and conversation because they listened to the advice of those teachers. It wasn't until uh, after statehood in 59, 1959, and then in 1978, there was a state constitutional convention which made Hawaiian and English dual language of the, um, of the state of Hawaii. So it wasn't until the late 80s, early 90s, that some Hawaiian language educational teachers pushed to have Hawaiian reinstated back into the Department of Education as a way of, for the state to uh, help bring back Hawaiian language and it was their duty to support native language and culture, yeah. And so the reason why these, um, these families uh, pushed for Hawaiian to come back because when you learn another language or you learn your own language, um, it opens another door another way for you to look at the world. But also, this is the only place in the world where Hawaiian is, is the home language. Um, Olelo Hawaii was the language of everything, of commerce, of banks, in the courthouse, made the laws, all before that law in 1888. Everyone spoke Hawaiian. And so there's a couple proverbs that kind of come to mind. Iko Olelo no Keola, Iko Olelo no Kamake which means in life there's language and in death there's language too. What's mo most valuable about Olelo Hawaii is the No'ono Hawaii or Hawaiian thought and thinking which is slowly diminishing too. When you lose a language, you lose the Hawaiian thought process and you lose an indigenous way of, of looking at the world that, that can only be found here. Yeah. So when we stop speaking the language, then death. But when we try as much as we can, also life. And so there's one more I want to finish with, and it's called Inu Kawai Ele Ele. And this makes reference, Inu Kawai Ele Ele Akapoe Ike, drink the black waters of the learned people. And this is in reference to the newspaper movement from the 1830s all the way up to 1940s where we had over 125 Hawaiian language newspapers. If you take all those newsprints and you put them on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper today, you have over 1 million pages of Hawaiian language printed that still has not been totally all read yet. And so I call that the national treasure. And so that's, that's a source for us today to go back and tap into what they were saying back then because they were writing down all of their manao for us to capture now because it's still relevant to what we're doing today. So with that then, ho'omao ka olelo, e ho'omao ka nono, e ho'omao na mea Hawaii, mahalo. Awesome. So, to give you guys a little bit of background, um, why Hawaiian language was important for NT to learn and, and the history. And that was a breakdown of as far as the history of Hawaiian language. Yeah. So, our people, the people of Hawaii, the Hawaiian people, was one of the most literate people in the world. And our Hawaiian language was thriving. It was thriving and thriving and thriving. And when we were forbidden and when the language was forbidden and they couldn't speak, yeah, forbidden to speak their own language on their own land, we lost, we were losing our language. And my grandma, my grandma, um, she is from, she's a, she's a Kanehele Takahashinizo. She is from the island of Hawaii. She's born, I mean, excuse me, the island of Niihau. Born and raised in the island of Niihau. She's from, and our family is from 
Ni'ihau and Kikaha Kawaii, and she spoke the she spoke the Ni'ihau dialect. And her dream was for her grandchildren to be able to speak Hawaiian. And she was one of the kupunas that started that movement in Hawaii, where we would have kupunas coming to the classroom in elementary schools to teach basic Hawaiian, to teach colors, to teach um, Hawaiian values, and to teach um, numbers, just very basic Hawaiian things that that they could share with all of the haumana in the area. And so my grandma was one of those kupunas that started that um, that program. Um, she was also one of the she was the lead vocalist for the Melanie Serenaders, whose mish, their vision when they created their group was to make sure that their entire album was completely in Hawaiian, including the notes, the liner notes on the cassette tape. Many of you don't know what a cassette tape is. And a liner notes on a cassette tape is very tiny, but her their album was completely done in Hawaiian. And so her dream, because her mother was forbidden to speak Hawaiian and she lived through that time of seeing that pain of our Hawaiian language being stripped from our people. Her dream was for us to speak Hawaiian. And so um, my younger sister, Kiola, her first language was actually Hawaiian. And we've been speaking Hawaiian. Hawaiian language has been a part of our family for as long as I can remember, we spoke Hawaiian. And um, I wasn't fluent. I was not a fluent Hawaiian language speaker until I was 11, 11, 11, about 10 years ago and some change and he became a fluent speaker. And from there, I realized that our language, like, like they said in the video that you guys just watched, yeah. Um, with language, there's life and with language, there's death. And there was, a, there was a fall in our language. Our Hawaiian language started to die. They were forced to speak English. But a lot of our kupuna and a lot of our, our monarchs, they, they said no, aole. They were continued, they continued to speak Hawaiian. They were killed, they were beaten, they were in prison. Their homes were set on fire. Schools were set on fire. Their, the goal for them was to continue to be able to speak the language, but they were beaten. And as much as you wanna, wanna think that that's something that wouldn't happen, it did. And those millions of pages that he talks about for the newspaper, um, and that is an organization that Auntie's a part of, and I, I do the translation for their newspapers. And a lot of those articles speak about that time when our kupuna, um, see, and I'm not gonna cry again, <clears throat> but it talks about a time when our kupunas watched, they, they had to sit through that, or they were the ones that were beaten because they spoke the language. And when they had kids, because what they saw and because of that pain that they lived, that they grew up in, they told them they would never teach their kids. My grandma, my grandma learned Hawaiian language because she was an older, the older generation of her 23, 20, 23 siblings that she grew up with. She's the old one of the older ones, and yeah, twenty three of twenty three kids, and she was fortunate enough to be able to hold on to that dialect, but the younger siblings didn't, and she didn't teach my grandma didn't teach her kids to speak Hawaiian because she was afraid of what would have happened to them. Would they have been beaten? Would they have been killed? Would they have been imprisoned? You know, in a, in a time where. Hawaiians didn't have the support, they didn't have voting rights, they didn't have any way of being supported by this apparent government that was coming into our nation, into our country, onto our land. And so Hawaiian language was, was dying. And the only way that they preserved our language was through those, those millions of pages of newspapers and songs and chants and hula that was passed on. That is how our Hawaiian language stayed in place. And we were able to then, there was a movement in the early 70s with a group of people who um, we have Uncle Larry Kimura, you'll hear his name a lot. When If you get into Hawaiian language, you will always hear his name. Larry Kimura, Kaunoi Kamana, Pila Wilson, Namaka Rollins. These are our founders, yeah? Aloha Lani Hausman, and Kiki Kawaii'a. These names are in Hawaiian language and the revival of Hawaiian language 
these names are gold to all of us. All of us who are native speakers, these names are gold because it was because of them. These college students going to school at Manoa who decided that it was important to go and document our language, go and speak to the kupunas who could still speak Hawaiian and force them to talk to them, force them to teach them Hawaiian and get it recorded, get it on paper and start building some kind of of, um, of of curriculum or some way for our people to be able to learn Hawaiian language again. And it was, you know, my Auntie Cheryl, for those of you, my mom, Auntie Cheryl, when she went to college, she went, when she went to Yush Manoa and she was taking Hawaiian language, Hawaiian language looked very different from when we started to go to school at Navihi because the Hawaiian language that they learned was very basic. They didn't have all the structures that we have now they didn't have all the vocabulary because it was still being built yeah our hawaiian language if you look at the revival of our language and where our language is we're actually a new language if you look at the people who speak now uh, when auntie went to navahi there was a good I thought, you know, for some reason, I thought we had like at least a thousand people, but I guess when I looked at the numbers, we were barely hitting 500 speakers. Yeah, 500 people who could speak Hawaiian. And now today, we're hoping that we're at least pushing on about 20,000 people. And of that 20,000 people, it's maybe 20% of those people are fluent Hawaiian speakers, which is a very small number when it comes to language. And so, Hawaiian language like Native Americans and that first video that you folks saw, you saw Native Hawaiian language, Native Hawaiian and Native American languages being taught, Native Hawaiian and Native American language being creating immersion schools, because both of our cultures as indigenous people to our land were both stripped from our language. And so for Native Americans, unfortunately, for a lot of the, their cultures, a lot of their different tribes, some of them have not been able to revive their language because it was so far gone that the kupuna that were able to speak had already passed. And so there are so many tribes out there that don't have the ability to learn their native tongue, the language that came from the land. Yeah. And so like, as you were listening to, as you were listening to what you said, you know, the language, the language is a part of the land the language is just as, as, just as much a part of nature as anything else. Yeah, the language is a part of the culture. And without the language, we lose it. And we are obligated to protect our language. We are obligated to make sure that our language survives. Yeah, the, our language is so important to who we are as Kanaka Hawaii, as Native, for Native Americans, because that identifies where we come from. It identifies our land, it identifies our people, and it's our kupuna, our kupuna. That is their evi, yeah? They are the oevi of our land. And so for, for many people, people don't know that Hawaiian language um, went through this painful transition that, and a lot of times people just hear like, oh, like our kupuna were forbidden to speak Hawaiian, yeah, because they language. No, they weren't just forbidden. They were beaten. They were abused. They were set, they they were their homes were set to fire. The schools were burnt down. They were in prison, and they and when they were in prison, unfortunately, a lot of them also died because they didn't have the um, adequate funding to have to get lawyers or to figure out a way to support them. So a lot of Hawaiians went through this and that is why our language was starting to fade away because the kupunas, when I was younger, the kupunas who were our kupunas, you got to imagine they were the ones who were my age watching this and seeing this pain. So why in the world would they want to teach their children with the worry that that could happen to them? And that's, it's just, it was, it's so sad. And so if you folks ever, if people just ever wonder like, you know, what is the big deal about the revival of the Hawaiian language? It's a big deal. It's a huge deal. Yeah, our people pretty much died to keep our language alive. And those millions of newspapers, um, I wanna say like maybe 15 to 20% of them are, have been translated because we do not have enough speakers to help with the translation. 
We have so much documents and letters. We have letters from Queen Liliuokalani to Kawana Nakwa or Princess Kiyulani to Queen Liliuokalani. All in Makalala Hawaii, all in Hawaiian. And all those letters, you know, just within the last decade have we been starting to translate and starting to see the pain and and the destruction that was done on our country and our people and our nation and our language. And the first thing, what is the first thing that they take away from us when they do when when the Westerners came, what is the first thing they take away? Language. Do you know why they take away language? Without language, we cannot communicate with each other, right? What do we need to do? If we get our language taken away from us and we are needing to communicate with the new people that are, are the new world, we have to learn to their language, yeah? We have to learn their language, be able to communicate in their world. Because as Native Hawaiians, somebody new came to our land, we had our own way of living, but in our minds, we saw this new way, this new wave come with this and imagine and just just think about it if you see something new and it's kind of shiny and it looks really pretty what do you want what 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 do you feel don't you feel like you want it too you want to be a part of that somehow you want this new shiny thing that's what it was to our, our kanaka hawaii yeah it was we were just it was in this beautiful like as and i'm sure in your history books you folks learn something different about how Hawaii became a state. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow. Anyway, um, but this is just, you know, this is just for the language and we lost our language. And when we lost our language, when our language was stripped from us, we also started to lose our power over our land. We started to lose our land. We started to lose our values, our beliefs, because then it was, okay, speak English. Now we have, instead of believing in our spirituality, we had to believe in somebody else's spirituality. We had to learn, we had to learn all of that. And where was our language? Our language was hidden. Yeah, our kupuna during those times had to go and take our language and hide it. Why? Not to be beaten, not to be imprisoned. So Hawaiian language went through a lot. And for a lot of people, people may, may not understand the importance of speaking Hawaiian. And for auntie, and I love teaching everybody, I hope, everybody learns to speak Hawaiian. That is, I, I, I would, that's a dream. I want to see you folks be able to go to college and Hawaiian language is one of the languages that you get to learn. Like that's, that is a dream. That Hawaiian language is as normal a part of a conversation as somebody picking Chinese, Japanese, you know, because for a lot of you folks, and don't take this wrong, auntie's not saying anything, right? A lot of you didn't think of, I want to learn Hawaiian. Hawaiian language isn't the first. And a lot of Hawaiian people also don't say that. A lot of Hawaiian people don't say, I want to learn Hawaiian. We want to learn Japanese. We want to learn Chinese. We want to learn French. We want to learn Spanish. Because those languages are normal. Yeah? Those languages is the norm. Yeah? People, when you see, when you look at the world, when you look at countries, that's what you see. Because people forget that our little islands in the middle of the Pacific had it was its own nation and we have its own our own language. And so and because we were stripped from it, because our language was forbidden, it was taken away. And for so many years, imagine all those years, yeah, from the late eighteen hundreds all the way to nineteen seven almost a hundred years, we never have language. We didn't have a way to prove ourselves as Kanaka Hawaii because our language was stripped from us. It was taken. Those newspapers and everything that we printed, all hidden. Letters between Queen, Queen Liliuokalani, Kawana Nakua, or Princess Kaiulani, or anybody in her cabinet, all in Hawaiian, all hidden. Letter, those letters were never to be made public. Those letters were never to be sent in public. All of that. All of this work that they were doing, all Makolal Hawaii was all hidden because heaven forbid they should be caught. And they would, they would be, they would have to go through all the different punishments. So Hawaiian language is on its revival and I'm a very proud, I'm very proud to be a graduate of a Hawaiian language immersion school to be one of those, one of the, the first, first few. And so when I graduated, 
when I graduated high school, there was 12 of us. Um, my whole class was 12 people. But at that time, there were only 70 students who had been educated through the Hawaiian language through from preschool all the way to high school, 70 in the, the year that I graduated. Now, every year for graduation for Hawaiian Immersion Schools, this still sounds like a really small number because I'm sure a lot of you have this much people in your own class. Now in Hawaii, we have close to 500 students that graduate in through the Hawaiian Immersion Schools. So within the last 25 years, yes, 25 years, that's how far our Hawaiian language has grown. We went from having in three years, three graduation years, 70 students to now here we are cranking out 500 students a year coming out of the Hawaiian immersion programs. So the history of the, the history of our language is it died and it's been on a revival. And we're continuing to to continue. We're continuing that revival by being able to teach Hawaiian language, create curriculum, and put it into the school systems so that our Hawaiian students can go to school like any other school and be completely immersed in the Hawaiian language and learn how to speak Japanese, learn how to speak French, learn geometry, learn physics, learn calculus, learn how to our grammar in English. We do all of that makolala Hawaii. And that is something that we're very proud of. Um, and we owe a lot of that. And that's one thing that the video didn't share. We owe a lot of that to our Native American um, family here because there was the Native Americans who gave our Native Hawaiian leaders, the people who were the revival, who started to do the revival, Uncle Larry Kimura, Anake Kaunoi Kamana, they were the ones that gave them the tools on how to do this, on how to bring our language back, and how to go and, and re be represented in Congress to get funding, to get the Department of Education to fund these programs, to say that this is the curriculum that needs to be taught in schools. And as much as we wish that it could be across this whole country, right now we're just working on Hawaii. And so in Hawaii, we learn a lot about this. And my job here, my kuleana as, as a language, as a native speaker, is to make sure that when people want to learn Hawaiian, we teach them. We teach Hawaiian language. But when people want to learn Hawaiian language, you also teach them the importance of why it's important to learn Hawaiian and to remind them where Hawaiian language comes from and to remind them that it's a part of our culture. Yeah, it's it's hula. It's what we speak. It's our chants. It's in it's in everything. It was in our books. It was in, it, like he said, it was in the banks. It was in it was in our legislation. It was wherever you went, the stores. Hawaiian language thrived, and we need people to understand, and we pe we need people to know that it needs to continue. And if you ever get the chance to speak Hawaiian, to learn Hawaiian, take it. Take the opportunity to speak Hawaiian because not only are you learning another language, you need to look back at the history of Hawaiian language and see what you're doing. What are you help, like? Look at what you're you're helping. Look at what you are. You can be a part of of this revival and and we're still our Hawaiian language. Unfortunately, is still in that revival seat. We are still trying to. We're trying to be normal. When you go to Hawaii. The language you hear mostly is English still. And we need to change that. Yeah, when you go to Japan, what language do you hear? Not English. When you go to China, what language do you hear? Not, Ch not, not English. Korea. Any country, right? That's the language you're going to hear is the language of that country. And that is what our job, that is what we are trying to do for Hawaii. We are trying to make it so that when you come to Hawaii, you hear Hawaiian language, you see Hawaiian language, you feel Hawaiian language. And that is the only way, that is the only way we're going to be able to normalize our language and make sure that our language continues to thrive. So I'm sorry, I think you can go on and on about Hawaiian language. Does anybody have questions? Oh, oh Kamalani has a question. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kamalani. So when they first were there actually people in, inside the school or did they just burn the school down? No, they just burned the school. There was nobody in the school. 
when they burn the school down. Don't worry, yeah, sorry. Akalamai. They burnt the school down so that we didn't have a way to teach Hawaii. Okay. All right. And here's another. Kalamai, there's some videos because as much as I can share with you Hawaiian language, these people are, these kanakas, these videos that I'm showing you are people who I admire, who I idolize, who are a part of the Hawaiian language movement. So. It means, and this is from Michael from Kahului. What does the word haole mean? Ah, uh, it's actually, it's an old, old word mm -hmm. meaning foreign. Mm -hmm. Now it gets to the, I mean, folk etymology has the ha ole, yeah. which is a different word. Mm -hmm. It meant from literally foreign, not from here. So that in the census, because the Hawaiian kingdom was actually a multi-racial kingdom, and when they did the census, they did not measure your color or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be popolo, you could be, you know, black-skinned, mm -hmm. and still be called haole because you weren't a Hawaiian subject. Mm -hmm. And you could be from India or you could be Japanese and you'd still be called haole. Oh. <laughs> so is <laughs> the word, you, you know, a lot of people think that haole is a derogatory term. Well, it gets used as a derogatory, <laughs> but so can Hawaiian. <laughs> so can Kanaka, so can anything mm -hmm. can be used as a derogatory. It's certainly become, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, drama goes on race these <laughs> days. You know, <laughs> there's much study on, I mean, that's, that's sort of an American custom is the, the whole racial tension thing. Mm -hmm. There was very different dynamic during the kingdom era and even moving into the territory era. But, you know, that, it's an unfortunate cultural mm -hmm. Issue. Michael right. also wants to know what's the definition of aloha. We only have an hour, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's so broad. That's why it's just you know. I mean, you can cover some of the bases, but well, they're asking because of the. I mean, they're, they're the aloha and the ha. Aloha and, and ha. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me let me put it this way, um, and and this is my way of attacking onto a previous question. Um, let's think of aloha like this. Japanese, with all due respect, the, the language can go back to Japan. Chinese, they have their motherland in China. Mm -hmm. This is our aloha. Mm -hmm. This is it. <laughs> so you, you cannot separate that from the only place that it's ever known to be. That is aloha. Aloha aina, aloha olelo, aloha lahui. Mm -hmm. Who we are. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's misuse of the word? Well, I think... Or do you um, find that some people overuse it, or maybe even overuse some Hawaiian like words just to appear to be more decorative, uh, decorative or, or more Hawaiian? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, at, at least it's being used. Mm -hmm. I, I, like mm -hmm. to, I like to maybe put more effort into reminding people that mahalo does not mean the trash can, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. it's written on trash can. <laughs> it doesn't mean throw away your trash, yeah. you know, but... But hey, at least it's being used, and um, we just have to, you know, getting back to your, your previous comment about cringing when you hear someone mm. mispronounce, it just makes me um, want to work harder, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, to, to help. help right, to, to help. 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 Right. And getting back to actually the language being a weapon, of, so, you know, and I think there's 20,000 people that invested enough to learn mm. to speak it. There's 20,000 reasons. <laughs> and in learning Hawaiian, because there's a... Hawaii is different than most of the world, and you know, not to launch into a lecture on, but the huge body of written material here is unlike yes. anywhere else. Yes. So learning Hawaiian opens the door to that for a lot of people. And so they become politically, historically, culturally aware in ways that the general public don't. That can be seen as divisive, mm -hmm. it's not. And it's how you learn the true meaning of aloha and, and haole mm -hmm. and mahalo through mm -hmm. getting back inside to the manao of our kupuna. Okay, so those four, um, four Kanaka, those four people that you saw, um, all of them have been um, people that I've looked up to. Snowbird's like my best friend, not really, but we kind of are. She doesn't know it, but I know it. Um, and Kumu Hiapo, that was there, he was my Hawaiian language teacher. He was, um, he was our, our class counselor as well. And he is a, a lot of the, he's the person I still go to for my Hawaiian language. So um, like he said, Hawaiian language, 
the only place that Hawaiian language is from is Hawaii, right? And we need to be the ones who we are obligated as Kanaka Hawaii. If, if, and again, this is no disrespect to people because I think we're going to a lot of people. But if you have koko, if you have blood that flows through your veins that connect you to some kind of indigenous language, to a native, to a land, a native land. It's your kuleana to go out and make some kind of effort to learn that language. And so for Kanaka Hawaii, it is, we're obligated. It's our kuleana to make the effort to learn. And like one of the things I loved is that, you know, um, um, Noglamai was saying about how people tend to like to use Hawaiian language to be decorative, to make them seem more Hawaiian. Yeah, we like to, you know, everybody can try to use the kind, the Chinese, all that kind of stuff. And, and you hear people always trying to like throw in Hawaiian words here and there because they may think that they're more Hawaiian. Understanding the huolelo and understanding the words is what makes it Hawaiian. Because Hawaiian, our language is a part of our culture. Our language is a part of our identity. And we are obligated to make, to learn our language and to make sure that our language thrives because our language is proof of our land. Yeah. Like you said, aloha aina, aloha olelo. It's the same thing. So uh, this week, what we're going to be looking at is the relationship between language and culture. And how language and culture, the importance of the two and what the relationship is of the two. Um, we look at history. We look at history tomorrow and why our language, well, why we start, saw the decline in our language. And then on Wednesday, um, Uncle Kalani is an excellent speaker. He'll be much more entertaining than I am. He'll be sparkles and glitter and throwing confetti everywhere um, as he talks to you folks about language. And he's going to definitely ask you folks a lot of questions, but um, don't be afraid of him. He's just, he's just a normal person. And then on um, Thursday, we're very, we're very lucky to have somebody who does speak Filipino from the motherland, um, Auntie Trish. Wise in Hunt, very not Filipino last name, but Auntie Trish is going to be here on Thursday. And what she's going to teach you folks are is language, is Filipino language revolving around our values and why language is, is not just, just language, that language is a part of culture and why the language is important to um, our, her values and how language can also be important to Hawaiian values and why we raise our family the way we do through language. So we're gonna learn that and then on Friday we'll try to wrap it up. But in the meantime, your guys ha Vina, your homework. And I know Auntie Steffi is it's on our it's on our Google um our Google Drive. And Auntie's gonna show where did my shirt? Here we go. Um, you folks are going to be responsible because again, I know we all come from different backgrounds and so again I'm gonna all of you folks who have who have coco of different cultures, you should make an effort to try to learn them. At least one. It's, it's your kuleana. Yeah, in order for it to continue to thrive, that's what we need to do. So, because I speak Hawaiian and I cannot speak all the other languages and you guys are learning halua, we are going to be learning how to do our introduction in Mako Olala Hawaii in Hawaiian. And all of you are going to, <laughs> thanks to, <laughs> all of you are going to go ahead and learn how to introduce yourself in Hawaiian. And on Friday, you're going to do that as well. On Wednesday, I'm just going to give you guys a heads up because Uncle Kalani knows you guys are doing this and he knows how it's a little bit easier to do introduction. He may ask you to also do this. So I just, I tried to tell him not to. But anyway, um, ana means introduction. And ho'olauna, launa is to be familiar with someone. And when you ho'olauna makola Hawaii in Hawaii in the Hawaiian culture, a ho'olauna was a sign of respect. Yeah, it was that initial moment when you understand if that person is somebody that is older than you, or somebody who is younger than you, and to know where your role is in Hawaiian culture and through our language and just Hawaiian culture and values as a whole, they were very much aware of. Um, of status as far as like respect goes and making sure that our people were not embarrassed, that, they, that we were very clear on what our expectations was. 
when as far as our conversation and so when you do a whole alona your whole alona was important because one your inoa your name yeah inoa means name and i should have highlighted sorry inoa means name this is right here and it's very important because your inoa connects you to your ohana your family and when you're connected to your ohana it connects you to where you're from yeah where the land what your ohana is known for it connects, are, are they kanaka lavaya? Are they kanaka mahi'ai? Are they kanaka ho'okele? Like, all of that. All of these things would connect you. So the ho'olona, makolo lavai in Hawaiian culture was so important. And all of this through our language was able to give the other person we were talking to all the information they needed to know about who we were. So for example, I tend to use my whole name because we're doing a ho'olona, blah, 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 blah. I don't usually use my whole name, Kalamai. Um, but when you do a ho'olana, when you do a proper ho'olana, you use your name. I'm not using my middle name. Don't tell my kumus that. But you're supposed to say your whole name. You're supposed to say, oh, blah, 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 You're supposed to do the whole thing, okay? So I just don't use my middle name. So, ole aloha o kia anue noe kaula kou inoa, no ka ua i hanakahi o hilo mai au. Kana kolu ku maono u makahiki, o Cheryl Young no kohana ho okano ko u makuahine, no kaina pula pula o kahalu a me havi kiola o ko uohana. So simply what I'm saying is my name is Lealoho Kianwe no e kaula. I am from Hilo. I am the age that's on there. I'm, I'm that age. And no, no, Auntie Steffi, no, that. I am that age. My mom is Cheryl Young, who is of the Ho'okano family. And our family comes from the land of plenty of Kahalu and Havi. Of, so we have two different. So in a proper Ho'olauna, it's not just, it's not just saying where you're from, yeah? So for example, I say Hilo, but I say no ka'ua i Hanakahi o Hilo. I honor Hanakahi who is the chief of Hilo. So you have to honor the person of whom you're from and then you connect to where you are. And then you have to say your age because then it gives you what status are you. Are you part of the Hiapo people or are you part of the Muli people? And when you say your, your Ohana's name, I announce that my mom is a part of this Ohana of part of Kahalu, yeah, the and the, the land of plentiful. I let them know that where my family is from. So Kahalu and Oahu Havi on the island of Hawaii is where we connect to. Um, do you? Yeah, I wanted to add the rainbow, um, and that is a proper ho'olona. Um, if you want to be super formal, if you are a super formal um, introduction, you actually do your mo'okuaha, which is your genealogy. I would have started, so I can go, I can go four generations up. So I can do my great, great, four generations above me, I can go. And you would start from that generation and you got to build their names down till you end with you. So, but again, this is very, can you say two places where you're, yeah. Yes, Kina, Auntie did. I said Kahalu and Havi. My family is from Kahalu on the island of Oahu. That is from my great great grandmother's side and then my family is also from Havi which is on my great grandfather's side which is my whole Kano line they both came from two places came together to make our family um and so this is a traditional introduction I know a lot of you look worried or don't look worried some of you might look excited you're not gonna have to do this one okay and he's going to let you do ah this one so I have it written out here but you guys already have it in a Google form you guys it's part of your guys have you you don't have to write it you can if you need to okay again the top line is O blank Koinoa Koinoa is my name Inoa is the most important gift you would have ever gotten in your entire life is your name that is who you are Okay, that's ko inoa. No blank my ao. This is where I'm from. My ao, where I'm from. Okay, so the second one you're gonna write where you're from. You can say where you're originally from. You can say where you're 
um, Ohana is from, or you could simply say Beaverton. No Beaverton my ao, yeah? O le aloha kauna ko inoa, no Beaverton my ao. And then o'u makahiki, you're going to say your age. Some of you may need help, some of you may not need help. This is how you're going to help each other. On our Google Classroom, you cannot ask me and you cannot ask Auntie Steffi, but you can ask each other. And on that stream, everybody can have conversations. So please reach out to each other and ask. Some of them are in our Hawaiian language class, so they should be able to help you. And if they don't help you, then you guys just let Auntie know because we get class this weekend. Okay, next line. O blank, ame blank, ko mo, and I did all this, okay? The reason why I did this is because everybody's family is different. For example, in our house with our keiki, they say that they talk about their grandma, yeah? We only have the one. Some people have one, some people have two, some people get four, okay? Makua, this one right here is parent. Kupuna is grandparent. Anake is auntie. Anakala is uncle. Makuahine is mom. Makuakane is dad. So like auntie said, or Cheryl Young, Ko'u Makuahine. Cheryl is my mom. You could simply say that. You could say, O blank, Ko'u Makuahine. You can, and if you need help with that, auntie can help you with that. So however you want, however you want to write this out. Okay, again, everybody's different. Okay, next one, hele ao ike kula o. Hele ao means I go. Heleo, kekula is school. Heleo ikekula o blank. Whatever school you go to is what you're going to put in here. Again, this information is on your Google, is in the classroom, and you're going to have to answer that and fill it out, and you're going to practice it. Okay. Uh, sorry, Auntie Lay, real quick. Yeah. Um, so the one that Auntie Steffi put up, um, I did Auntie Lay's original one, so I do have the one where your family's from, but I'm switching it right now, everyone, and I will re-upload it in a minute, okay? So, yeah, if you did look at it already today, it is missing the school one. It'll be up in just a minute, but I have to reassign oh, Sorry. It. No, so I'll repost in just a minute. Okay, thank you, Auntie Steffi. So, if, like, Mama already did her homework already, too bad, you guys did it again. Actually, it was Kina, but yeah. Oh, sorry, Kina. Oh, that's the sad face she got over there. Okay, sorry, Kina. All right, so that's one Havina. And now Auntie has a second one, okay? Second one. I know, for those of you who don't know me, I love to give homework, but I promise it's fun. It's fun homework, okay? We have one more, okay? So this one, I think, this one I'm hoping is a, is a little bit more fun. Um, and I better send this to Auntie Stephanie too. Um, for this oh, Ha'avina is Nahuo Olelo Ho, okay, it means the Ho'huo Olelo Ho, Huo Olelo is word, and Ho is new, yeah, we always say Hana Ho, Hana Ho, you guys always hear that, right? Huo Olelo Ho means new words. So I would like you to pick two Hawaiian words related to the daily theme that you will continue to use after Ha'aloha, okay, that you will continue to use after Ha'aloha that you would like to learn and either take a picture or draw a picture of the item. I actually put like this because it might not be, it could be anything. And then upload to the daily discussion. And that's all inside. So poa kahi, this word right here means Monday. Poa lua means Tuesday. I should have put this in Hawaiian too. I think I can do that. Poa kolu is Wednesday. Poa ha is Thursday. Poa lima is Friday. Poa lima's one needs to be picked when you come on Friday to our class for wrap up that you share. Again, only two words. I need you to only do two words and these are your themes, plants, animals, family, colors, and favorite food. Okay, two words. So, uh, okay, so the goal is to introduce myself in the Hawaiian language, learn the importance of indigenous language. Those are some of the video, and we have, Auntie has put up a lot of resources for you folks for videos that you can go to learn about the importance of indigenous language. Maybe this is something that may interest you to go into more. Um, understanding the importance of mo'o kuauhau. We're going to go through that during this week. 
Uh, learn 10 new Hawaiian words. Teach someone. Ah, uh, this is the second one. Teach someone in my home five new Hawaiian words. So at least one word each day. And I obviously, I can't come to your homes to check. So just be honest and do the work. Learn about the different native Hawaiian languages in Oregon and Southwest Washington. Also going to share that video with you folks and increase my awareness of other languages. That is what I hope that you folks get from this week. Okay. Um, Cause Hawaiian history language is a part of our history more than you will ever know. We were annexed. Our, we were overthrow, our overthrow happened. Our land was taken from us. Hawaii was taken from us because our language was taken. All of that that has happened through history has a relationship to language. So learn that. And as you grow, as you continue to grow, be sure to, um, be sure to continue to be aware of that, especially because we live here. Yeah, we live here on the continent. Everybody should be aware we are on somebody else's I know we're on somebody else's land, yeah. And they too have that same struggle. So take the time, take a little bit of time to maybe know where you from, where what land you on, maybe understand know the tribe, and maybe learn a few words. You never know. It might be something that will interest you. So um, mahalo for listening today. I know that's a lot you guys are like, oh my gosh. Um, there's a lot of Havina, but the Havina is through the week. It's not every it's not every day. So I'm going to switch over and Auntie Steffi is going to share a little bit so we can clarify something. Let's go. Make Auntie Steffi. There you go, Auntie Steffi. Boom. I was talking to myself, sorry. Okay, we just have to fix one more thing. And then, so yeah, if you went on um earlier today then you sh already could have should have seen most of it however i have i had to redo the google doc so i am trying to reassign that right now so if you reload let me make sure that the attachments on there um when i reload it there we go okay so let me move things around real quick La, 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 la. Um, but okay, so there's two things now. So if you go back onto the Google Classroom right now, you should see two things posted. Okay, so this is the thing that Auntie Leah and I don't want you to get confused about. When you go back on this second time, okay, um, here we go. All right. Da, 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 da. Share. All right. So now for Mahele Elua, there are two things that are going to be posted. Okay. So the first thing uh, that you're going to see is today's assignment. Okay. On there is going to be your worksheet that Auntie Lay just talked about. Okay. Um, Auntie Lay said where her family was from. So I kept that on there as an optional. I'll highlight this for you guys. Optional. Okay. You don't have to do that last one, but you do have to do the rest of it. Now, my friends, where it says delete this and type your name, we actually need you to delete it and type your name. Okay. We, it's not like school where you can just fill in the blanks and do the things. What? Okay? So I purposely put delete this and type whatever so that you know that you have to delete and type what whatever you have to type, okay? Thumbs up if everyone sees what I'm saying. Okay, cool. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, the reason why we're doing it as a doc is so that Auntie Leg and or, and or myself can go in there and like give you guys some feedback about like, you know, if she, if she wants you to maybe change some wording or just make sure that everything is formatted correctly so that when Uncle Kalani comes on Wednesday, we're ready. Um, then from there, you're gonna go into today's um, exit ticket. Like I told you guys, it's gonna be longer because it is a pre-assessment for what Ashley will be sharing with us tomorrow. 
Um, and then there's some other stuff that we may or may not add in, but most of this stuff we will cover tomorrow. And um, the goal is that we can kind of see before and after what, oh, what you guys know. Okay, so it's a little bit longer than normal, but just take that time to do it. There's two pieces in here because um, we're also doing the word of the day. Okay, so there's two things you have to fill in. You have to do what I just showed you and you are going to type your two words of the day. Okay, and Auntie Lei will ask you for your pictures tomorrow. So you either need to go take a picture of it or you need to go and um, sketch it, whatever your two things are. And so today, the theme will always be on the top. Today's theme is plants. Okay, so everyone go out and find two words, tu hua olalo, about plants or mea kanu. Okay, thumbs up if you understand. Okay, and the reason why that is a question is so that you guys can go in and see everybody else's words, right? So that you might learn your two, but you can go learn everybody else's words also. And so we'll go over that tomorrow. Michael, do you have a question? So like the name of a plant or something that describes the plant? I would say for Ho'olalo Ho Antile, I think we were thinking word that describes a plant, huh? Yep. Yeah. You can, well, you can do the word that describes the plant or the name of the plant. Okay. So either or. Yeah, either or. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, like, um, Kina, right? Like she does the Samagita, right? Which is the, um, but we have the Hawaiian word for it, which is, that's the Pikake, right, Kina? Pikake. It's yeah. Pikake. Right? So yeah. she gave us both like the Filipino word, but she also gave us the Hawaiian word. So most plants, you can give us the Hawaiian word and the English or the Hawaiian word and whatever, um, where else it can be found. So that's, mm -hmm. that's you can do both ways. Yep. And you cannot, happen. and this is another, no Uncle Google no, any of that. This is anti. My one question was, how many of you have Hawaiian dictionaries at home? Oh, I can put that on too. Do how we have a Hawaiian, Hawaiian dictionary? I think you do have a Hawaiian dictionary, Michael. Okay. Oh. For I hope you. Okay. So whoever has a Hawaiian dictionary at home, you cannot use the website that Auntie's Auntie Steffi is going to put up. So don't cheat, cause I know. Because the words on the website is different than the one in the book sometimes. Okay, so try not to use the, some of you are going to have to, or you could also ask people. There's some people who um, take Hawaiian language, some people who speak Hawaiian language, who may be in your Google Classroom that you could ask. Okay, I'm, I want you to be more of that. But, um, but you can also go on vehevehe.org um, but try not to read, try, try to use that book. Try to see if, if you guys still remember how to use a dictionary. That'd be great. Yeah, I know rough. I know sometimes you're like, what? I can't just Google it. No, you cannot Google it. And if you Google it, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to know because Google doesn't give the right language. Just like, um, I think somebody was asking about Duolingo. I think Hawaiian's getting better on Duolingo. I know in the beginning, Duolingo was not, I forget who asked it, me in the uh, chat, sorry. Duolingo was not that great in the beginning. Um, but um, Hawaiian language is definitely one, of, I think, well, all languages is one of those. You can learn through Duolingo, but I like to learn from people just because I want to know the root of the word and all that stuff. But it's, that's a it's different. It's like, um, you know, like when you go places and then there's like the, here's the crash course so that when you go there, you can do the basics. Yeah, right. like that. Like I'm learning Spanish on Duolingo right now, and I'm sure that if I talked to tried to talk to Chloe in Spanish, some of it she'd be like, "Oh yeah," and some of it she'd be like, "Auntie, what are you even talking about? Like that's not the same, right? Like it's it's generally the idea, but it's not going to be like what a native speaker would say, yeah, or like a fluent speaker would say necessarily." And Hawaiian language is like everybody else's language. There's the formal, there's written, and then there's conversation. We, it's the same thing for us. Just like Japanese, there's written, and there's conversation. So. And the different awesome. dialects too, right? 